Jake, that's going in the fire? No, that's mine. I can't hear you, that's going in the fire? <laughs> that Look is that. really, really pretty. My uh, but belts broke in. Hey, we're gonna get our day started up. We got our trusses over here. We're, we're driving those over the farm. We're gonna offload those, getting ready to put those up, probably starting tomorrow. Uh, got the ram in the background warming up and we're probably gonna cut some timber today we have got to get all the purlings cut for the uh, for the pole barn you guys know we're on that mission is the pole barn is our mission in life right now so I reached out to uh, Nathan's buddy uh, Joe Main he is uh, he makes these blades he he welds them up to length and uh, I, I ordered and we paid for these blades uh, I, I expect them to work just absolutely as good as any blade on the market, if not better. These are silver tip uh, Turbo 7s, or Turbo 7 silver tips. I'll put, a link, I'll put a little thing at the bottom of the screen. But anyway, you can see, I'm going to try to hold this really still. You can see that the cutting angle is quite a bit steeper on these than the 10 degrees that we normally use. I'm excited to see how the new engine uh, works with this and uh, the, this, this blade. I'm expecting some really cool results. But I will say this about uh, Joe Main, it l literally, uh, the, I ordered them, paid for them, they come in in like three or four days. So uh, you can't really beat that in today's world. Let's get hooked up. You ready to go? Are you ready to go? So I haven't been anywhere for a couple weeks. Yeah. He ain't been to no, he ain't been to chicken land, chicken strip land in a little while, have you, buddy? Slick them on this thing, this thing got rusty. We've just been going and going and going and going and going. Plus the the road salt. That's true. So the road salt been on the This one came loose on the way over here. So let me give you the rundown on how we decided to get a lean-to. The building is 30 by 40, and in my mind, that's a big building, and I guess it is a big building. Uh, however, when you park uh, a gooseneck trailer in there to work on it, you have no other room. So I, I, I was like, wow, this is, this is not gonna be as big as I thought it was. 
So we decided to um, that we decided to put a lean-to on the side. Well, we call around all these companies uh, in our area. I mean, we're talking about two, three-hour drives away, and they're all three to four months out. Uh, so you know, two two months out was like the soonest we could get it. So I called this company in Henderson, Tennessee, called Blue Steel, and they're like a they they build buildings for you know they actually come out and build the whole entire building, but they you also can buy trusses from them, and I put their information below. Uh, long long story short, they didn't have anything. He said, "Look, we don't have anything for you," um, and I told him my tin guy was coming in like two weeks to put tin on the top on the roof, and so he he, he uh, uh, calls me back about ten minutes later. Said, "Look, I got a building uh, that's been put on hold." He said, so you, I have some trusses, some, some lean-to trusses for it. If it, you know, it might not be exactly what you want. They're 14 foot long from end to end. Is that something you could use? I'm like, you know, one foot difference? Absolutely. So we went down and picked them up that same day. So I really appreciate the guys at Blue Steel for getting these trusses to us. And uh, uh, helping, they, they, us, helping us getting out of the jam. Yeah, yeah, help, helping us get out of the jam. It was my poor planning and then fact that, the fact that, uh, you know, the COVID has affected everybody. But these trusses are really well built. So this blue steel, there they like, they have engineers and they have. Um, it, this is just a really high quality truss. It's actually a better quality truss than what we already have. Uh, as far as I know, the guy that we bought the trusses from, is not even in business anymore. It's not even gonna. It's not even making trusses. We bought them two years ago, and then after. I guess on COVID, whatever, they just quit making trusses. There's nothing wrong with these trusses that we bought. They're actually really strong. But you can tell these are uh, very, very precise. I've only got, I thought I had a half, uh, three quarters of a tank of fuel. I've only got a uh, two ticks on the fuel. So we got to get some diesel to bring over here tomorrow. Yes, Mark, get down. Come on. shot At least it's not as muddy down here. Because ground still frozen. I know, but it's nice not being all walking squish, squish, squish. It's got a little, almost 11 foot, but you can get a 10 foot board out of it. We are making prongs out of those, right? Um, I'm going to cut them in two by fours, yeah. Just because that one's kind of, I just want to see first off what it's going to be, how it's going to hold up our how this sawmill is going to cut oak. So that's red oak and hard, hard, hard. So that's going to be a, probably the best indicator of how this new motor, this new engine is going to do. Everybody going to get on me for calling it a motor. Hey, uh, remind us to get, make another, bring another bowl since the other one cracked. That's, in, that's what you're thinking about. Uh. Yeah, of course. It's important. He gets one into water bowl. He so, gets thirsty. You keep feeding him this chicken, he has to have something to drink afterwards. All these little pool, pools of water sitting around. Yeah, but he needs his drinking water. <laughs> all these little pools of water standing around. And yeah, but it's frozen water. Not all of it is. I guarantee you these animals are surviving, he can survive too. But he's not a normal. We could do it if we had to. He's not a normal dog. 
So this is about a 16 uh, inch diameter red oak log. Probably pull it back a little bit this way. Maybe we can get it on another. There we go, perfect. So what do you think is, Mom? That is wrong, ain't it? So this is about, uh, yeah. it's almost 12 foot long. It's 11 foot and some change. So we should be able to get some decent 10 foot boards out of the center. Um, my biggest concern is this arch right here. It's well, got can a, you not take the chainsaw and cut it off? Oh, I don't care about the knot. It's the arch in there. So we're going to lose some off the bottom. I'm going to cut across the top here and make it as flat. It's pretty much 16 inches on both ends. So it's very little taper in diameter. It's just this this law or this limb was, you know, it's got some arch in it. So yeah, I will probably just go ahead and take the top off of it, make it flat, and then flip it. So this one over here is not even touching. Let me drop this down just a little bit. I don't wanna I was watching a video where a guy was he was using his uh, sawmill and he cut he cut through one of the metal things in the back here. Ew. Well they always say it's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. Let's hope we don't have to do that. Alright, Gimmo, you get to move, buddy. Go. Okay. Go. Go, if this thing falls off, it's gonna roll on. Yes, Go. Come here. Come here. Come here, mama. Come here. Come here. There you go. Stay with me. Didn't bring you pillow to sit on it or anything, didn't we? Yeah, yeah. don't want to hurt me again, Mo. So, I do like the fact that the roof has got everything. Uh, all of this is dry in here. So, this is all no no water frozen to this but you can go out here and see frozen rain so we had some fright freezing rain the other day i don't want it to go that way i think i want it to just slide over like that oh uh, yeah that's better that's better that wind is so nippy i hear a lot of whining back there huh so I hear a lot of whining back there. I don't whine. I'm just stating a fact. You're moving. I'm going to have huh? So we we said something the other day. We were, we were bantering back and forth with each other. And she said, I didn't sign up for this. And I said, when you get married and you say, I do, that means a lot. I, it was some of the comments we got back on, on that. That was hilarious. So one guy was like, you know, you got to read the fine print. And the other guy was like, Kevin Bowie was a good friend of ours. He uh, uh, he said, uh, just remember that I do goes both ways. That means you gotta like my chicken. No, I don't have to like <laughs> anything. I don't dislike your chicken. I think they taste good. No, they do taste good, but not mine because they're pets. Yeah. So you guys don't know my my wife is a chicken fanatic. So she's never she didn't grow up on a farm, and we got some chickens over at our our current house, and she is just absolutely fanatical about chickens somebody's hunting somebody. i hope he's not hunting because if he is he sucks <laughs> that was like six shots all at once guess more didn't like it he's coming back <laughs> so hey some banging on booming going over there i think somebody's target practicing great that's something to look forward to living here <laughs> yeah we are in a we are in a country we know one thing, they're, they're rich. The bullets are expensive. <laughs> yeah, they're going to bullets a dollar a shot now for cheap ammo. You okay? I don't like that. So this is still a good blade. It's only cut a couple of... We need to get some nails out here and hang the good ones up and separate. Did you bring your drill? Uh, no, why would I do... Why would I bring what we need? That's just crazy. I know, but maybe, you know, you by any chance you might be having to I, I need. I'm going to set this right here, so we need to, like, when we get through, 
put that up out of the weather. That's another reason I want to put the tarps over the back so that when the keeps in keeps that blowing rain from getting in here and I can also hang some blades and stuff up there so I can walk by them and like tear flesh off. That's what I'm really looking forward to. Maybe you can put some um, wood behind it and then hang them. All right, let me get all my... I mean, make an area, kind of close it in, have the pointy sides towards the wall so you don't cut yourself. So let's take a look at these blades and compare it to a 10 degree blade. So these... That's what he does, he just ignores me. Let's take a look at this. All right, so this is a 10 degree blade from Cooks, and you can see the different angles. This is a seven degree blade from, uh, this is from Joe Main. All right, the blade is tightened up. I've got this, the spring tightened up. Basically what you do is you, on, on the frontier, is you, they have a big old huge spring that provides tension. You turn this to you touch, uh, feel tension just a little bit. And then you turn it five more turns, uh, five full turns, and that tightens it up pretty much in that sweet spot. So I, uh, I gave Joe Main the, the, the specs, which is I think 129 inches long for this blade. And he seems to hit right on because I've been sitting here turning it. Uh, and it's absolutely spot on. I mean, it's, it, the, the blade is running just as true as any other blade. So these guys have got it down to an art, and I'm really excited to see how this this silver or double double hardened silver turbo, whatever it is, I, I don't even know what it's called, but I'll put the I'll put the information below. All right, so now we got the fuel turned on. Throw the choke on. Let that thing warm up. Let it warm up. So this is 16 inches on this end, 16 inches on that end. So basically virtually no taper. However, the log has some severe curves. This is a limb, this is a limb. So we're just gonna cut it flat, rotate it, cut it again, and then uh, make a square tent, do the best we can. See if we can get a couple of two by fours out of this. These are, this is red oak, so this is going to give this engine a run for its money. I just don't trust that knot. I'm going to take it off. Hard to judge a knot from a distance. First impression, that is freaking awesome. Cause that's an old knot and it went through it. Clock. Huh? It makes a clock. That's something you want to keep, right? No, it would make a good clock. Make a good clock. There it goes. She wants to keep everything. We don't have a space. First impression, that, that seven, that was pretty impressive. Red Oak, so between the 14 horsepower engine and the, uh, what is it, it's a double hardened Turbo 7 silver tip wood miser blade. Lord, that's hard, that's a mouthful right there. I don't care, that's, that is awesome. I'll take another pass. All right, here we go, this is gonna be a real cut in here.
Jake, that's going in the fire? No, that's mine. I can't hear you, that's going in the fire? Oh, that makes a good project right Some there. Some rod on that one. I like it. It gives a character. Hold it up. Dude, that's really pretty. That'll, you can put some of that polyurethane in there and make something. That is cool. Future projects. The bark's already coming off. Huh? The bark's coming off. Yeah. So that'll be, that'll be nice. We'll bring it back to the house. Hey, at least with that guy shooting over there, we're not the loudest people. Ugh. A lot of mud on that one. I'm going to cut that mud off. I'm not going to try to get in it. You can see here where this has been in the mud. So I'm going to cut well below that mud line. I don't want to, that dirt will dull the blade faster than anything. My uh, but belt's broke in. I gotta tighten the belt up again. So you gotta get the toolbox? No, I just need a crescent wrench is all I need. So, actually I know I do need the toolbox. But this is, I can tell when that blade starts getting, um, or the belt starts breaking in, it's a brand new belt. That is so pretty. That is that. really, really pretty. I can't wait to make something out of that. So the bark's already starting to come off. You don't have to do much, just bust it right off. Yeah, it's been sitting outside in it all winter, so most of this bark's just gonna pop right off. I think we're maybe using that burner that you burn into the wood. That'd be kind of cool with that piece. Mm -hmm. All right, let me go get my toolbox. You love me, don't you? Not as much on days like today. <laughs> So this is my least favorite thing about this sawmill. Um, the belt that is your dry belt is also the belt that the blade rides on. And uh, as the uh, belt breaks in, so you're basically getting double the wear. So you're getting the wear of this pulley on the inside and then the, the blade is riding on the outside. And so it seems to wear belts down you know, quite a bit quicker. When you put a brand new belt on it, it goes through this phase where the belt stretches and breaks in and then it gets this basically this full length that it's going to be and uh, then you tighten it up and it lasts a good long time after that but you you do have to come back ever so often to retighten that belt because it's literally it's like tires on your car it's wearing out and you have to make adjustments for that as you go so i don't know it it, it wouldn't wear out as fast if there was a dry belt and a and a belt that runs the the, the the around the pulley like this one does. This is just a belt that rides over here. 
Did it sound like a lot of whining? Yep. Well, that was my that's my concern anyway. That's what. Gizmo, are you posing? So, yep. camper So I believe I understand why Nathan likes these uh, seven degree, I think they're silver tip, double hardened blades from Woodmiser. Um, yeah, that's, I got these from Joe Main, the same place he gets his from. I got the, I got the box of blades in like, I guess four days after I ordered it. So he put it all together, welded the blades up for me and sent them to me in like four or five days. It was, I mean, I wasn't even looking for them and all of a sudden they showed up already. So the, the this, we've got the horsepower now for the, the seven degree blade and you see I, I kept pushing harder and harder and harder and it seemed like the harder I pushed the better it liked it uh, just it just kept digging and digging and we had the horsepower to keep going so I'm excited I think the seven degree blades are, uh, are maybe are probably our sweet spot for our sawmill and our type of timber I haven't tried it on I haven't tried seven degree blades on pine yet but we'll see I got I got my helper here be ready to go home done He's doing such a good job. Here, the sun's going down. He knows it's time to go home. He's doing such a good job. Huh? <laughs> he's doing such a good job he's too. Doing such a good job. He protects his well. I think he's a doc actor. <laughs> dog actor. Yeah. I, 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 he's getting a bigger follow than we are because I have people go, "Hey, where's Gizmo? I didn't see him in the video." So, 
I ain't never had nobody ask if I wasn't in the video. <laughs> so these are just plain cut two by fours, and I, I didn't do a quarter saw on the, 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 the log with the thing on And it really won't matter. Some of these will be really good because the, the grain on the end is almost like quarter saw, and then some of them are going to warp like crazy. But Boy, you can leave them sitting up there, at least be off the ground and we can dry better. Well, I've already got them all over there and I won't be able to come in next time and... Okay. And just, uh, I think one thing, these are a lot heavier than those pines, I'll say that. You can tell a big difference. Big old heavy board. And you gotta build with them. Right now, once they, once they dry and get hard, you're not putting no nail for them, you gotta get a drill and drill a hole for them. They're like concrete. Yeah, some of these have rock spots in them that you know you couldn't tell in the log. I wouldn't use them as purlings, but you know we can cut the ends off and use supports or something. We'll find something to use them for. There's nothing else we let them let them harden and uh, run them through the planer. You know you could, you could split these in half and make some little four by fours because these are true four inch boards. I do need some four by four, I mean two by fours. Well I mean some of these could be good. I mean all these two by fours are not going up purlings. They're not they're not uh, I wouldn't get, they're not structurally sound. I need at least two, three of them. Look, whatever's left over, you can have. I need some for my new roost. Yeah. Right now, the only thing I'm worried about is pole barn. Not worried so much about chicken barn. Well, I don't want more bumblefoot, so. Huh? I don't want no more bumblefoot. You know how you can fix that, right? No, we're not eating the chicken. You can eat the chicken. And then they don't get no more foot injuries. I'm telling you. <laughs> did, you did you know that they're flat footed, by the way? Well, at least me and the chickens got something in common. I'm flat footed too. You know, I about busted you in the head, brother. Everybody's hearing me weed over here. My fat is working out. That's fat that's leaving my body. I'm trying to lose some weight. What do you think about that, Gizmo? <laughs> Give me that look. <laughs> got two ch chicken strips today, and guess we'll get both of them. I ain't eating chicken strips right now. He burns all them calories off and running around. So listen, we're gonna wrap this video up. Uh, I got these blades. I should. I should totally leave. 